As I sat down to read my book, it wasn't long before it felt like I was between the pages myself. Trapping is a lonely and solitary occupation at times and involves work in unsociable hours and no weather conditions. You will get stung, bitten, cut, cold, wet and muddy and often all in the same day. You will be ostracised in some quarters and treated as an oddity in others and as a final insult you'll earn only a fraction of your true worth. Is it worth it? I hear you ask. Well, I experience sights, sounds and smells others can only dream about. Magnificent sunrises and mystical sunsets. The dawn choruses are arise and the cacophony of the sound of the pheasant as he goes to roost. The chance find of a deer fawn curled up in a woodland glade, the nest of the nuthatch or the turquoise eggs of the hedge sparrow or a tiny leveret carrying its form is the only reward I desire. The fragrance of the lime tree blossom and the sound of the wind creaking in the woodland canopy as darkness falls elevate my senses to primeval dimensions and invigorate my entire well-being. I feel a true contentment when working amongst the copses, streams, fields and meadows of this beautiful country. And if I had my time to live all over again, I would be what I have always been. A hunter, naturalist and defender of the right for anybody to work alongside Mother Nature and to reap her bountiful harvest throughout all the seasons of the year. Is it worth it? Too damn right it is. My name's Steve Capel of Countryman Pest Control Limited at Northampton and we're going to take you on a very short journey through the trials and tribulations of a rural pest controller. You may learn something new or something you haven't come across before but whichever case it will be a very interesting story. To begin with, we went off to check some mole traps. Right, we'll have a look at this uh, trap we set here last night and hopefully we've got a result. But it's been a bit of a wet all night, so... Ah, that's good, looks like it's gone off. Right, we're just going to have a little look at this uh, Talpex mole trap. This is another one that's gone off. Hopefully we've got a result. There we are. There's mole number two. A bit bigger one this time. Oops, so what we've got back in the day. Yeah, one's considerably bigger than the other, so I would imagine that it's, it's a pair there. Yeah, one's a male, one's a female. That was a good result, though. That was fun. Two out of two, yeah, success. Right, let's have a look at this uh, squirrel cage. A really good um, catching place for grey squirrels is actually on these old trees that have fallen down because squirrels cannot resist running up and down these uh, old tree trunks to get up to the taller trees. So. A good place to put um, a cage to intercept squirrels, you say, is on one of these fallen trees. And it also stops other predators getting at your cage. Always pays you to padlock and chain your cage on to stop two-legged thieves walking away with your, with your cage. Um, the best bait in a woodland situation is hazelnuts on a wire just hanging over the treadle plate. You can use peanuts, but you'll find you'll catch a lot of little birds that come in. Um, little blue tits and that to get the peanuts. So the best bait you can use is some, some hanging hazelnuts and the old squirrels can't resist that. A lot of people have trouble trying to balance a cage onto a, a tree trunk. If you just nail a couple of hazel wood, wooden battens either side, you can sit your cage on it absolutely perfectly. In actual fact, you could even put a Mark VI fen trap on there with a cubby over it, obviously, and get the same results. But just a little tip, stops your cage rocking about. As the squirrel sped off, it was obvious Steve's reputation is spreading fast amongst the locals. Right, then, Paul, let's have a look, see if we've had any luck with this. Yeah, the old trap's gone off, we've got one. Oh, 
trapping is a craft. Getting your quarry within 200, 100 or even a 30 yard range is one thing, but getting it to travel that last inch is another. Once turned around and in place, Steve set to work on his masterpiece. Pull this soil back up to the back of the trap. Put a bit in the front of the trap. Now what I just need a setting stick, which we'll just put under the pan of that trap. And we just need to see the see bit of this. Start covering the old trap up. Gently remove the setting stick. And the last thing we do is we find the safety catch, flick the safety catch off using the setting stick, not your fingers. And that's the Mark 6 Fen Trap set. Yeah, and to show you the power of a Mark 6 Fen Trap, this is set to catch a rabbit exiting the hole, i.e. coming out, and he'll put his front feet onto the trap and he'll be caught at the front end with devastating results. As we can see here, what a fantastic day out here with Steve, showing rural pest control at its finest. Caught a rabbit in one of the traps, as you can see, our old friend Myxomatosis here. It's a terrible disease, but it's a part of our life now and we just have to deal with it. So at least with the fen trap being set efficiently and safely and capturing its intended target, this poor soul has been put out of his misery. The countryside is there for all to enjoy but it is the countrymen like Steve that maintain the balance so everybody else can enjoy it as they do wish so.